topic for today's seminar is critical evaluation of impression techniques in complete dentistry. These are the contents under which we will be covering the topic. Introduction The journey towards successful denture fabrication begins with making accurate impressions. All subsequent steps that are necessary for complete denture fabrication would be greatly diminished if the denture base does not fit due to, due to inadequate impressions. Search of literature reveals that there is constant evolution in impression principles, technique, and materials. Definition Winkler described an impression as an imprint or negative likeness of teeth or edentulous areas where teeth have been removed or of both made in a plastic material that becomes relatively hard or set while in contact with these tissues. According to GPT-9, it is a negative likeness or copy in reverse of the surface of an object and imprint of teeth and adjacent structures for use in dentistry. Boucher described an impression as a record or negative form of tissues of oral cavity that make up the basal seat of the denture. The basic requirements of impression making include knowledge of oral anatomy, knowledge of basic and reliable technique, knowledge and understanding of materials used to make the impression, skill of the dentist and patient management. The objectives of impression making are preservation of the alveolar ridge. The event stated that it is more important to preserve what already exists than to replace what is missing. Retention for a denture is its resistance to removal in a direction opposite to that of its insertion. Stability refers to resistance against horizontal movement and forces that tend to alter the relationship between the denture base and its supporting foundation in a horizontal or rotary direction. Support is the resistance to vertical component of mastication and to occlusal or other forces applied in a direction towards the basal seat. Aesthetics. The thickness of denture flanges is one of the important factors that governs aesthetics. Impression should reproduce the width and height of the entire sulcus for proper fabrication of the flanges. Now coming to different impression techniques, they can be classified based on the theories of impression making as mucocompressive, mucostatic or selective pressure technique, based on mouth positioning as open mouth technique and closed mouth technique, based on manipulation, hand manipulation or functional movements, based on the type of tray, either stock tray or custom or special tray. Now coming to pressure technique, it was put forth by the Green Brothers and it is based on the mucocompressive theory. Proponents of this technique claim that displacing the soft tissues into their supporting form while making the impression would result in better distribution of occlusal forces to basal seat. This technique presumes that occlusal loading during impression making will be same as the occlusal loading during function. According to Triad et al, the pressure impression advocated the use of closed mouth technique. First, preliminary impressions are made using impression compounds. Then cast is poured in a special tray fabricated using base plate. Occlusal rims are then made and vertical dimension is adjusted with the base plate as the tray. Another impression is made. The tray is held under biting pressure for two minutes. Then peripheral muscle trimming is done and posterior palatal seal is recorded. Disadvantages of this technique are that the oral tissues are resilient thus they tend to return back to the original anatomic position once forces are relieved. During function, the constant pressure exerted onto the soft tissues limits the blood circulation leading to residual ridge resorption. Closed mouth pressure technique does not allow for adequate muscle trimming of the periphery. Very often dentures made with closed mouth impression technique are overextended and must be arbitrarily trimmed. Now coming to minimal pressure technique. It is based on the concept of mucostatics introduced by Harry Page. The main point of mucostatics principle concerned Pascal's law, which states that pressure on a confined liquid will be transmitted throughout the liquid in all directions. It is considered interfacial surface tension as the only important retentive mechanism in complete dentures. According to this theory, the impression material should record without distortion every detail of the mucosa, so the completed denture would fit all minute elevations and depressions. Impressions should cover only area of the oral cavity where the mucous membrane is firmly attached to the underlying bony structure. 
merits of this technique was that this concept was actually developed to minimize the pressure developed while making the impression, thereby maintaining the tissues in a healthy condition. May be useful in conditions like sharp or flabby ridges. Demerits are that mucosal topography is not static over 24 hour period. There's difference between mucosal contours just after rising in the morning and which exists after 12 hours in an upright position. So it, all infinite details achieved in the impression would be altered by the time the denture was completed. Mucostatic principles also ignores the value of dissipating masticatory forces over largest possible basal seat area. The denture is closely adapted to the denture bearing mucosa, but there's poor peripheral seal. Presence of short flanges affect retention stability to a great extent, and the peripheral seal is not obtained. So when dentures are under function, they lose their stability. Now, come to the variations in the mucostatic technique. The mucoseal technique, which was stated by Pryor in 1948, anterior lingual border is molded by the tongue, then the base is extended horizontally backwards. The base is extended horizontally backward over the sublingual gland towards the tongue to effect a border seal. Thus, this technique utilizes the benefit of both minimal pressure and also provides maximum extension of denture borders and maximum coverage of the denture bearing area. Now, the next is subatmospheric technique is based on the concept of mucostatics developed by Milo Kubelik and Buffington. The objective of this technique was to reduce the stress on any given tissue by increasing the load bearing area. The form of tissue is recorded vertically and laterally when a controlled partial vacuum is established in the impression tray. It is maintained in the mouth without direct mechanical support. The vacuum is developed between the soft tissues and the tray. The difference between the subatmospheric pressure within the tree and the outside is all that is needed to center the tree over the ridges in a static position. The recording material in a fluid state flows from the border region to the evacuated space and develops the basal tissues. Now, selective pressure technique was advocated by Boucher in 1950 and combines the principles of both minimal pressure and pressure techniques. The philosophy of selective pressure technique that certain areas of the maxilla and mandible are by nature better adapted to withstand extra loads from the forces of mastication. These tissues can be recorded under slight pressure while other tissues must be recorded at rest or be relieved with minimal pressure. Now let us look at different areas of the maxillary arch. The primary The primary stress bearing area <clears throat> are the crest of the residual alveolar ridge, which is covered by a layer of fibrous tissue, which is most favorable for supporting the denture because of its firmness and position. Posterior lateral slopes of the hard palate as they are made of thick cortical bone. The secondary stress bearing area is the rugae area, since it can resist the forward movement of the denture. Relief areas are the incisive papilla, which covers the incisive foramen, which carries the nasopalatine nerves and vessels, and the mid-palatine raphe, which covers by the mucous membrane and little submucous tissue. In the mandibular arch, the primary stress-bearing area is the buccal shelf area. It is at right angles to the vertical occlusal forces. It is covered by smooth cortical bone. Buccinator muscle fibers are attached inferiorly along the buccal shelf area and tension placed on the bone in areas of muscle attachment tend to preserve the quality of the bone. This area is covered by an intervening submucous layer containing glandular connective tissue. The secondary stress bearing area are the retromolar pad area. It is an area which rarely resorbs because of attachment of the active temporalis muscle tendon ending on the alveolar bone just distal to it. It is covered by a smoother, less keratinized epithelium. And the other secondary stress bearing area is all ridge slope. 
as they have thin plate of cortical bone and they are at an acute angle to occlusal forces. Hence, it is a secondary stress bearing area. Relief areas are the crest of the knife edge ridge, which has cancellous bone and mandibular tori. Selective te pressure technique can be achieved by fabrication of custom trays with escape holes. First, a primary impression is made with compound in the usual manner. Then, 1 mm thickness of base plate wax is adapted onto the cast to allow space for the impression material. Tissue stops are cut out of wax. A custom tray is fabricated and border molding is performed. Following which the space of wax is removed, escape holes are made and definitive impression is made. It gives sufficient valve like seal without exaggerated pressure on the soft tissues. Demerits of this technique include that this technique is firm. This technique demands firm healthy mucosa covering the ridge and cannot be used in cases of flabby ridges. Selective pressure technique can be achieved by fabrication of custom trays with proper spacer design and escape holes. Spacer designs are given by different authors. Roy McGregor recommends placement of a sheet of metal foil in the region of incisive papilla and mid palatine and raffi. Neil recommends adaptation of 0.9 mm casting wax all over except the PPS area. Voucher suggested placement of 1 mm base plate wax over the entire basal seat except the PPS area. According to him, the PPS will act as a guiding stop to position the tray properly during impression procedures. Shari's design. A layer of base plate wax is adapted over the whole area outlined for the tray, even the PPS area. Four tissue stops, 2 mm in width, are placed in a molar and cuspid region. Bernard and Levin's design. One layer of base plate wax, 2 mm thick, is adapted all over except the PPS area and the posterior part of the pallet. Next, coming to Moro, Rudd and Rhodes design. Full wax spacer, 2 mm short of the border and 3 tissue stops, 4 into 4 mm, equidistant from each other, are made. Evaluation and comparison of different impression techniques. This will be based on the pressure, tissue health and tissue coverage and fit of the denture. The, now, based on pressure, the mucocompressive technique, as the name suggests, is based on the pressure principle. <clears throat> the pressure applied in this technique was too much. Mucostatic technique is based on mucostatic principle where no or minimal pressure was applied. Selective pressure technique, pressure was applied selectively. And this is uh, an in vitro study was conducted to evaluate the pressure generated on a simulated maxillary analog by two impression materials, light body addition silicone and zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. You had two techniques, minimal pressure technique and selective pressure technique. It was concluded that in the minimal pressure technique, the difference of pressure at different locations of denture bearing area is practically insignificant. In selective pressure technique, the pressure is significantly higher at the crest of the ridge than at the mid palatine and raffi addition. The pressures recorded with light body addition silicone are lower than those recorded with zinc oxide eugenol impression paste at the three locations. Next is tissue health. Mucocompressive technique is harmful to the health of the tissues. There is increased bone resorption, transient ischemia, pain and soreness. The tissues are in function throughout the day. Mucostatic technique has high regards for tissue health and preservation. The tissues are in a state of rest throughout the day except during function. Selective pressure technique, there is less interferences to surrounding tissues. The tissues are in a state of rest throughout the day except during function. Tissue coverage and denture fit. In mucocompressive technique, there is more tissue coverage, so there is better retention, stability and support. But the dentures would fit well during mastication only. Retention was transient and loss of retention at rest is occurred due to tissue re rebound. Mucostatic technique, short flanges affected the denture retention. Dentures fit well during rest, but retention is compromised during function. Selective pressure technique, this maximum tissue coverage with minimum interferences to surrounding tissues. The dentures fit well during function as well as during rest. I mean the open mouth technique. 
open mouth impressions are made with a tray that is held by the dentist and attempts to record the limiting tissues in the active state. Detailed record of these limiting tissues is imprinted into the final impression material by manipulation of these tissues by the operator, by the patient or both. In closed mouth impression technique, supporting tissues are recorded in a functional relationship. Since impression was recorded during functional position, the final dentures would retain well and cannot be dislodged during functional movements of the jaw. In this technique, the tray with occlusal rims are used instead of a special tray. Impression techniques in compromised situations. Impression techniques are modified in compromised conditions to achieve as much retention and stability as possible. Impression techniques for patients with hyperactive gag reflex. A hyperactive gag reflex compromises the quality of treatment. Connie DJ stated that patients' gagging problems can be due to iatrogenic, physiologic, psychologic, anatomic, organic disturbances. It should be identified and treated before making the impression. The patient can be managed by pharmacological measures which include peripherally acting gels, syrups, local anesthetics or centrally acting drugs. Psychologic intervention which include diverting the patient's attention and prosthodontic management wherein the impression tray with shorter setting time can be used. Excess thickness and over extensions can be corrected. Patient is made to sit upright with the head tilt forward position. A modified maxillary custom tray was fabricated with a disposable saliva ejector embedded in the wax at approximately midline of the custom tray. This aids in removal of excess material before it can elicit a gag reflex. Singer's marble technique was used for treating hopeless gaggers. First, the patient was asked to place five marbles successively in the mouth for one week. Then, it was assessed whether he was able to do so. Following which, impression procedures were attempted after application of topical local anesthetic. Lower base plate was inserted. The patient was asked to keep three marbles along with it. And a training bead was placed on the lower base plate to maintain the tongue position. Then, upper base plate was introduced and marbles were discontinued. Jaw relation and tryon were performed and lower denture followed by upper denture is inserted. Different impression techniques present to record the impression of flabby ridges. A flabby ridge is one that becomes displaceable due to fibrous tissue deposition, most frequently seen in the upper anterior region. Unless managed properly, they can affect the support retention and stability of complete dentures. Three main approaches for management of flabby ridges include surgical removal of the fibrous tissue, fixed prosthesis, which are implant retained prosthesis, or conventional removable prosthesis made with modified impression techniques. These are the techniques. Hopkirk's technique. The impression is made with heavy body silicone in a border molded special tray then the heavy body material overlying the hypermobile tissue is cut and escape holes are made a wash impression is made with light body impression material next is john bolter technique recorded the healthy denture bearing tissue with zinc oxide fusion oil paste and the undisplaced fibrous tissue with impression plaster Paltine's palatal splinting using two-part tray system. It was given by Osborne and involves two overlying trays used for recording maxillary displaceable anterior tissues. First, zinc oxide eugenol impression is made with the first tray and light body impression uh, silicone impression material is used in the second tray and the tray is seated in position. This is the final impression. William H. Filler gave a modification of Osborne's technique where light body permalastic material is used in the first tray and plaster gum in the second tray and the tray is seated in position. The two trays are held together until the impression material sets and the impression is removed as a unit. Zafrullah Khan technique. Primary impression is made and cast is poured. Then a custom tray is fabricated leaving an aperture for the flabby tissues. Bottom molding is performed and wash impression is made. Excess material is trimmed to the outline of the apertures. 
then impression plaster is brushed onto the flabby tissue. Separating media is applied and master cast is poured. Advantages of this technique <coughs> is that it saves chair time, does not require the fabrication of two custom trays, enables visualization of the impression making of the unsupported movable tissues. Impression techniques for unfavorable mandibular ridges. These ridges where ideal amount of supporting structure decreases, there is an encroachment of the surrounding mobile tissue into the denture border, reducing stability and retention. The main aim of the impression is to gain maximum area of coverage with minimum pressure by obtaining long retromyelohyoid flange for better border seal and retention and to educate and train the patient to maintain the tongue position. These are the different techniques. First is the three stage impression technique by Arthur Fries. First, a preliminary impression is made <laughs> using an oversized metal stock tray. Low heat modeling plastic is loaded. The patient is asked to do all border molding movement. And impression is poured in stone. Then a secondary impression is made. <coughs> the acrylic tray is fabricated on the cast just short of the outline. Back stops are prepared in the molar region and anteriorly. These stops are kept 3 to 4 mm beyond the normal vertical dimension. Self cure acrylic resin reline material is mixed and loaded on the tray. Patient is asked to bite and do all border molding movements. This tray is used to make the final impression. Acrylic resin after uh, it is hardened. The doing impression paste is mixed and loaded on the tray. The patient is asked to perform the same border molding movements. The impression is boxed and cast is poured. Flange technique was given by Lot and Levin. It involves making impressions of the soft tissue adjacent to the buccal lingual labial surfaces and incorporating the resulting extensions of flanges in the denture. Fluid wax is rolled from the retromolar pad region to sublingual region. It is large enough to restore the areas of estimated resorption. Then the patient is asked to forcefully perform functional movements to give a border extensions which cover maximum surface area. Modified fluid wax technique. It is a technique which uses fluid wax to capture primary and secondary stress bearing areas without distortion of the residual ridge. After border molding with modeling pla plastic impression compound, the spacer is removed and a window opening is created. Mouth temperature impression wax is used to make an impression. The impression is placed into the residual ridge and vinyl po polycyloxane impression material is passively injected over the window opening. This is the completed modified fluid wax impression and the definitive cast. Modified impression techniques. Admix technique given by McCord and Tyson in 1997. It is used in case of flat lower ridge with atrophic mucosa. Here three parts of impression compound, seven parts of green stick compound is mixed uniformly to give a, make a final impression. All green technique. In this technique, green stick compound was kneaded to a homogeneous mass and loaded on the special tray. Border movements were done and final wash impression was made using ZOE or light body addition silicone. Functional impression technique given by Winkler. Overextended alginate primary impressions are made. Occlusal rims are constructed. Then three applications of tissue conditioning material is done at 8 to 10 minute interval. Final wash light body impression is made. Cocktail impression technique. It's a combination of admixed and functional technique. McCord and Tyson's technique is uh, done followed followed for definitive impression. For recording the functional state, the patient is asked to run his tongue along his lips, suck in his cheeks, pull the lips, swallow by keeping his mouth closed. As in closed impression technique, till the impression material hardens. 
This is a case report comparing different final impression techniques for management of resorbed ridges, conventional technique, admix technique, oil green technique, cocktail impression technique, functional technique, and border molding and impressions using elastomeric compounds are compared. The results showed that the mandibular dentures made using functional impression technique showed highest mean values of complete denture insertion. Dentures made using green stick compound with zinc oxide eugenol final wash showed least mean values of complete denture retention. Patients with microstomia. Majority of limited mouth opening patients can be treated by exercise. But if no response is there, then prosthetic treatment procedures have to be manipulated, especially the impression making procedures. Walter described a technique with the use of sectional stock trays. Impressions of each side of the jaw are made one at a time and two halves were joined and the cast was poured. Robert Lubeck used Lego plastic blocks to prepare sectional stock trays. Cheng used key and keyway attachments to prepare sectional custom trays. Gekil prepared tray in two parts, anterior and posterior. They are oriented by three vertically placed metal bars. Conclusion, success of complete dentures largely depends on the accuracy of the impression. Accurate impression needs thorough understanding of the anatomy, physiology of the supporting structures, properties and manipulation of the material. Based on the particular condition, dentists need to select material and technique of impressions for success of complete denture therapy. Ideal impression must be made in the mind of the dentist before it is in his hand. He must literally make the impression rather than take it. These are the references. Thank you.